A few announcements for you today. Uh, Buildings and Ground will be meeting following worship, I'm assuming in uh, the fellowship hall. Yes? Okay. Uh, and uh, Christian Ed has moved their meeting from tonight to tomorrow night. And worship has moved their meeting from tomorrow night to Tuesday night. So keep up with it. <laughs> And member care has not changed their meeting. They are meeting on Saturday. Um, a note to you to sign the um, books we have out for our high school graduates, uh, Mary Elizabeth Strickland and um, Ellen Warden. They're in Memorial Hall with a pen. Please make sure you do that. I believe they're being handed out next week. Yes, Steve? I'm sorry? Next week, senior books are being handed out? Yes, uh, I'm going to next Sunday. Sorry. 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 In the of conversation. Um, I am going out of town this week on Thursday. I'll be gone for a week. We're going to go spend some good time with our children and grandchildren. Uh, if you have an emergency, a pastoral emergency, John Kimball is your guide. His information is in the bulletin and the e blast. The bell raisers will be on uh, raising bells on the front lawn, not this week, but next week. So come and uh, listen to their beautiful music next Sunday afternoon. Two weeks from today, is a, a, we're, we're starting up a Sunday fellowship again following worship. It has been a minute since we've done that, but it's fifth Sunday fellowship on Sunday, May 29th after worship. So put that in your calendar. And also we have finally calendar thanks to the generosity and hospitality of um, John and Mona Lee our annual picnic, which will be at their home Sunday, June 5th, in the afternoon. So pay attention to all of that stuff. Wow, those are a lot of answers. I, oh, don't forget to sign the project pad. If you are um, new to us and you would like us to have your contact information, but whether or not you want us to have your contact information, please sign the black folder in the queue and follow on We uh, want to know that you're worshiping with us today, and again, if you want us to have your information, please include that as well. I believe those are all the announcements I have. So, oh, oh damn. Thank you. The call of Mary and dedication will be following worship, but before the session meeting on Sunday, June 5th. And the call of Mary is right out there, and it's beautiful. So uh, join us for that as well. Thank you. Anything else that I forgot, which wouldn't be a surprise? The flowers today, the beautiful flowers, are um, given to us by Harper, the, uh, Harper Grace Newmeyer, in loving memory of her brother and her father. Let us worship.
and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. My friend, scripture is clear that the mercy of our Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. That all who call upon the name of Jesus Christ in truth and repentance are forgiven. So know this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As God has forgiven us in Christ, let us offer now the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please stand and share the peace with us.
we continue listening for the word of God, let us continue praying. Holy God, I do believe that you have called each of us here today, and that you want something for us, as well as something of us. So give us ears to hear you, eyes to see how you are already at work in our lives, and hearts and lives that are ready and willing to be changed by the winds of your spirit. From the book of Acts, chapter 11, the first 18 verses, please listen for God's word to you. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? And Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. <coughs> there was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will baptize with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? And when they heard this, they were silenced, saying, and then they praised God. Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks God. Our granddaughter, one of them, Ellen, is 19 months old. And as a 19-month-old, she is learning every day. She's learning how to express herself. She's learning how to interact with toddlers at her daycare. She will be learning later this year that she no longer will be the only child for her parents when the new sibling arrives. That's going to be a rough one. Ellen's also a bit outspoken, I'm told. She's a bit of a sassy pants. And she has been expressing herself lately through her hands. Specifically, she's been hitting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she has hit other toddlers at preschool. She's hit both her mom and her dad. Now her mom and her dad and her te preschool teachers are trying to redirect that energy and willfulness by saying, gentle hands, Alan, gentle hands. It's going to take a while. <laughs> her mom texted me this past week and included a picture of Ellen from Ellen's preschool teacher. You see, Ellen took a swipe at another child again this past week, and that child swiped back. <laughs> leaving a scratch on Ellen's face. <laughs> the learning continues. <laughs> Ellen is learning about boundaries. We all have learned about boundaries. In human society, we've all been taught there are things we should do and things we 
shouldn't do like hit other people. Another set of boundaries we've been given are the Ten Commandments God gave to Moses. God gave those Ten Commandments in order that God's people would live in harmony with one another. And then G Jesus boiled those ten down to two. You remember, love God, love your neighbor. That's it. But it is hard to give up old habits when we're given a new set of directions, isn't it? You know, like switching from a PC to using a Mac. Oh my gosh. Or how we all had to shift to figure out how to worship online and live stream. Heaven help us. But we're still doing it. And we've learned. And we even know how to Zoom now. We are so cool. Well, today's text is about shifting into new circumstances and the struggle of letting things go. Peter who is at the center of this text today, has been a faithful Jew his whole life. He has attended worship. He has obeyed the commandments. Moreover, he has followed the dietary restrictions laid down by his ancestors and Scripture. Even as he followed Jesus around for three years, he did all of that. But now Jesus has ascended into heaven, and Peter finds himself the de facto leader of all of those who uh, follow Jesus. Right before today's text, Jesus, uh, it's Jesus, Peter visits the city of Joppa. And while he is in prayer, a voice from God tells him to get up and eat. But what he sees before him in this vision is this sheet dropped down from heaven, full of creatures and reptiles and birds, some of whom you may not know are on the do not eat list, that list handed down by his ancestors and reptiles. So Peter counters this voice, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. This happens three times. Not once, not twice, three times. Peter has a thing with three, doesn't he? <laughs> you may remember that it was three times that Peter denied Jesus in the courtyard. And then a few weeks ago, Jesus asked Peter on that beach, Do you love me? Three times. And now it's three times a voice from heaven tells him to get up and eat. Oh, the voices we keep hearing. If it was just about breaking dietary laws, that would be one thing. But then a Gentile named Cornelius, who was a God-fearing man, invites Peter to his house. And Peter went, thus breaking even more laws in Scripture, mind you, about fraternizing with Gentiles, and not only that, but eating with them. But in doing so, Peter shares the gospel, breaks bread with them, and opens the floodgates for Gentiles to be accepted as equals, believers in Christ. This is the reason this text today finds Peter being grilled before the council in Jerusalem. And as he relates his dream and subsequent meeting with the Gentiles, Peter makes this clear to them. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. In other words, those laws, those scriptures are no longer helpful because God does not tolerate segregation. Not just with food, but with people. Yet we're still grappling with this, aren't we? You may not know this, but in the early 20th century, it was common practice for Presbyterian pastors to go to the houses of all the parishioners on Saturday nights to determine whether or not the parishioners were ready 
for communion. If they were, and the, and the pastor decided that, they would receive a token that they would bring to church the next day to take communion. And if not, well, they couldn't partake. This was called fencing the table. <laughs> Thankfully, we no longer do that. We aren't called to judge. There are to be no more fences. But this struggle is not new. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, the Israelites are reminded of who they were before God chose them, and that they need to treat others as God has treated them with that same kindness. Deuteronomy chapter 10 says, For the Lord your God executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. It's all over the Old Testament. In the book of Job, even in Job chapter 31, Job speaks of his own hospitality as he's defending himself before his friends, saying, The stranger has not lodged in the street. I have opened my doors to the traveler. Job got it. It is the job of those who are loved by God to love the stranger and welcome, welcome them in regardless of who they are. You see, this is the root of the word hospitality. In Greek, philoxenia means welcoming someone, moving them from stranger to friend. Theologian Karl Barth speaks of this when he describes those we encounter as Christianus in spe, that's Latin, that's the only Latin I know, which means a Christian in hope. We see the stranger not as foreign, but as someone in whom God is already working. And so we are to, as Barth says, encounter that person as such. Do not make a distinction, the Spirit tells Peter. Do not make a distinction, the Spirit tells us. We are to welcome all, as Hebrews chapter 13 reminds us. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. God does not tolerate segregation or our picking and choosing whom to love. As singer-songwriter Carrie Newcomer has written, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, there is room at the table for everyone. Here and now, we can be the beloved community. There is room at the table for everyone. Peter discovered this on a rooftop. And then he lived it out with Cornelius and those gathered. And then he defended it in Jerusalem where all came to understand that in God's kingdom, God does not make distinctions nor tolerate segregation. Have you ever stood in a circle? I'm sure you have with others. But have you ever noticed when you're standing in that circle that all are equal? No one's in front, no one's behind. No one's above, and no one's below. The kingdom of God is a circle where all are welcome. All are equal, like the sign out front says. Now, I will say that fences are good for some things. Ellen is learning this. <laughs> Fences keep dogs in and deer out, hopefully. Fences keep children safe from traffic. And fences keep neighboring ranchers and farmers at peace with one another about legal boundaries. Fences and rules are helpful to a point. 
But sometimes we take those to an extreme and keep out those who God wants in. Peter learned this, and so did the Jerusalem Council. Let's take a cue from them, then, and welcome all to God's table. And when we do that, it is good news for the kingdom of God. And good news for the kingdom of God is always a reason for us to say, Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is one that you may not be familiar with. So Carol and I are going to sing it and play it. You're welcome to join us if you know it, or just sit and listen. But please, pay attention to the words. If you want, you can stand as you are able and join us in the prayer of St. Francis.
other joys that you have this morning. George! In addition to my wife, Linda's parents, and Victor, my wife's son, and her family, I should have kept your last week off of every month, so I have a birthday with you. Happy birthday to Jeff! Who was your birthday? Friday. Friday, this last Two days after you, moms? <laughs> wow, what a great birthday present, Linda. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jeff. Absolutely. Other joys that you have this morning? We had a really fun little songs and strums on Friday night. We did have a fun songs and strums on Friday night. You should have joined us. All kinds of interesting things were sung. <laughs> and fun was that. Yes, I'm happy to have our granddaughter Audrey and her friend Anna with us this morning. Yay! Thanks for joining us, Audrey. Nice to see you. Any other um, things? I'm excited because my husband's coming home Tuesday. Woohoo! Uh, he uh, went to Iraq over the weekend and they dedicated a brand new church in Mosul that had been destroyed by the war. Uh, which is great news, and then they visited a new church development uh, in Erbil, and now today, or he actually already did it because they're eight hours ahead of us, he preached at a church in Beirut, so he's coming on, he's exhausted, but uh, prayers for, um, you know, joy that for the kingdom all around the world, um, certainly for safety coming home. Yes? Not a joy, but just a, a concern of the church. Uh, Tom Walker, a uh, dear friend of ours, is a former minister of this church. Mm -hmm. Came in 1985, and uh, Tom has uh, Parkinson's disease and is at NHC Cool Springs uh, nursing facility. Uh, like I said, he's uh, 85. His uh, mind and spirit is fairly clear. It's just that he's living in a deteriorating body, and uh, I just wish that people would offer prayers to uh, Tom, who uh, led this church and the first church of uh, Franklin, and then went to uh, first church in uh, Nashville. Uh, other concerns that y'all have this morning? Robert? Yes, Chris. For my cousin Sandra Fisk, who was just diagnosed with ALS, and for her husband, because they navigate this. Yes. God, we come before you on this beautiful spring day, mindful of your open gates and seats at the table. We give you thanks for the seat that is ours at your table and for the seats that are yet to be filled. We thank you, O oh God, for putting people in our paths, people who don't know yet that there is a seat waiting for them. Help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear and even words 
to invite, words to sit with, silence to love, and hands to help sharing your grace and mercy with them. This morning we celebrate and give great thanks for the joy of graduations, for Brandon moving on to other things in his life, yet another degree in his future. We give you thanks for birthdays, being able, able to celebrate with Linda and Jack and so many others, yet another trip around the sun. For gathering to sing songs and tell stories, we give you thanks. For family and friends joining to worship, to be with you and one another. For the joys and new experiences of traveling for new churches and churches yet restored, we give you thanks for the opportunity to share with brothers and sisters in Christ far and near. We certainly pray, Lord, for those who travel for their safety. And we are mindful of all of those who have been displaced and are in danger in Ukraine. Pray for them, O oh God, and we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear how you can have us help. For Tom Walker, who is struggling with Parkinson's disease, we pray for him and family during this hard time, as well as for Sandra and her recent diagnosis of ALS and her husband as they navigate this. We pray for Jacob Wilson and his family. We pray for successful bone marrow transplant and a donor for that. For Harper Grace's friend and the hard place that she finds herself in and for that unborn child. We pray, O oh God, for the people of Buffalo and those who grieve and those who are injured. Oh God, when will it end? When will we be able to put down weapons of destruction? Help us, O oh God, to do that. And we do pray, O oh God, for those who grieve, who remember. We are thankful for memories, but we pray for folks, even ourselves, who walk sometimes in really hard places. We give you thanks that you are with us in those dark places, and yet take our hand and lead us into even places with light and nourishment, pasture and running water. We thank you for your presence, O oh God, for always abiding with us no matter what. So now we thank you and pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to the
offered and multiply them so that they might, might be used for your presence, for your purposes, and for your kingdom. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is an oldie but a goodie. Hymn number 300. We are one in the Spirit.